lovely learners in learning land, Tyler from 10 Thumbs Pro coming at you with another ukulele tutorial like we do every single Wednesday and Saturday. Today I'm going to show you how to create your own backing tracks. Now this is for almost any genre, country, pop, alternative, anything except for jazz and blues that have specific chord progressions to the genre. Which is fun because it means you can be more creative as well. We did a video on how to use backing tracks, so check that one out in the notes as well. You'll also see links to Patreon where you can get tabs, backing tracks, other support up here in the links. In the description, you'll see my email if you want some one-on-one -on -one lessons and links to our other social media. Okay, you've subscribed, thought about becoming a Patreon, grab your ukulele brain attention span, follow me on in, and let's learn how to make some backing tracks. I would love to hear them too, so if you make one, let me know. You can email it to me, upload it to YouTube. I would love to jam on it. If you make one, I will jam it. If you build it, they will jam. Today we're just talking backing tracks built from the major or the minor scale. From Daft Punk to the Beatles, this all comes from the same chord. So whether you like pop, pop rock, outlaw country, pop country, hip hop, funk, any other genre really, everything from Weird Al to Coolio, you can do it from this approach. In fact, a lot of modern genres aren't really so much about the chord progression because you're free to be creative there, but a lot of them are tempo specific. For example, techno is pretty fast so you can dance. Hip hop is slower so you can kind of nod your head mid-range tempo, for example. So the first thing that you wanna do is choose a key. Is it gonna be major or minor and then what key? So if you put up a key chart like this and you look at it, you can say, you know what? I'm feeling like I'm gonna make my backing track in the key of D. Okay, so if we look at the key of D, these are the chords in the key of D. By choosing a key, we've done two things. We know the chords that we have available and the scale. If I say the key of D, the key of D, I don't know why I did that. What I'm saying is everything comes from the D major scale and that same scale is actually used to create the chords. That's why when you sing or improvise with the D major over those chords, it's gonna sound good because the scale literally created them. So now we have that, we're gonna go ahead and pick a chord progression and start to develop our idea. In this line, any of these chords is gonna combine with any of these chords. So experiment with them and have some fun with them and see what you come up with. I was just playing the ukulele a little bit and I came up with a progression I like. That's a one, three, four, one, meaning it is D major, F sharp minor, G major, D major. So now I have my progression. Now I can start building my track. Well, what do you need to do that? You're gonna need an instrument because that's what you're gonna play. You're gonna need a D, A, W, also known as a da, 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 da. Ah! And that means digital audio workstation. That's a fancy way of saying something like GarageBand, Pro Tools, FL Studio. I remember when they used to call it Fruity Loops, Ableton Live, or Reason. I use Reason. Why? It's because I used to look up to my older cousin Travis, and one time I went over there and he was using Reason, so that was the one I tried. And I've been using it now for a long time, so it's what I'm comfortable with, and I really do like it. Try a couple out. A lot of them will have free demo versions. If you buy a piece of hardware, for example, like a keyboard, it'll come with Ableton Lite. Try a couple out, see what one works for you. Essentially, more or less, they're all kind of the same idea. You can record audio and you can use MIDI to create digital tracks. And speaking of hardware, we're gonna need some. Microphones, unless your ukulele has a direct input or a DI, where you the same thing you use to plug into your amp can plug into your computer, you're gonna need a microphone. So you either need an ukulele with a DI or you need a microphone and a mic stand. Both of those are gonna to connect to something called an audio interface. And the audio interface essentially is the gatekeeper from the real world to the digital world. Step one is connect your audio interface to your computer. Step two is to open up your DAW and create an audio track. Make sure you choose the right channel. For example, if you're recording on channel one and you have it set up to channel two, you're not gonna record anything. So make sure you choose the right channel as well. Now what you're gonna play is gonna record. But even before I get there though, when I'm building backing tracks, I like to kind of look for a drum loop that inspires me and kind of goes with the flow of the progression that I was playing earlier. Cool, I like that, that sounds nice. Acoustic, swing, nice and mellow, we're gonna go with that. 
All right, so now it's time to record. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set everything up to record my ukulele. I'm gonna hit record and I'm gonna go ahead and play. When recording my ukulele, because I'm recording with a microphone, I wanna go ahead and aim the microphone at the sound hole. If you have two microphones, you can also aim it at the bridge. In fact, experiment with mic placement because different mic placement is gonna get different sounds and you can have fun with that. You can create your own style. Okay, now it's time to record. Let's go ahead and record our chord progression. Drums and chords, you can do only chords if you want, right? I like the drums and I like bass. I like to kind of think about my, if I were to see my backing tracks live on stage, it would be a trio band. It would be drums, bass, and ukulele. Sometimes I'll add piano or guitar, for example, if I want to make a bigger sound, but kind of think about what would my backing track look on stage? What would this band look like? What bands do you listen to? If you go to a Willie Nelson concert and you see five people on stage, what are those five people playing? If you want to recreate that energy, each one of those five people would get a track. So you go and you see him live, you see Willie singing. He gets a track. You see someone on piano, someone on drums, someone on violin, and someone on guitar. Each one of those sounds needs its own track. Also, if you're gonna take this a step further and not create backing tracks, but actually record your own music, you're also gonna need tracks for your audio and your instrument. Those are gonna need their own tracks. So some people on stage in this hypothetical mythical example are actually gonna need more than one audio track. I've seen people record drums at home and use like eight microphones. Now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and take the next step and add bass. Now you can do this with a digital keyboard if you want and use MIDI sounds, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my bass and use that concept of direct injection like we talked about and connect my bass directly to my audio interface. Cool, and there you have it. That is the backing track that I built with my ukulele. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jam over it because that is what I like to use for my backing tracks. I could even also practice singing my scales in do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do over the backing track if I want. But I'm gonna go ahead and shred, okay? <laughs> have it folks those are the steps to build your own backing track kind of research a little genre specific kind of ideas if you like country music what's typical of country music what's a typical beats per minute what's a typical drum sound um, what's what are more common chord progressions if you like really romantic pop like Nora Jones kind of not really jazz but we maybe like new jazz or soft jazz what are some typical chord progressions if you're a big fan of R&B Motown what are some of the chord progressions get to know the genre a little bit and try to replicate the genre in your backing track that's amazing practice as well Excellent job, everybody out there working, making your own backing tracks, doing amazing stuff. This one was a lot of fun. Please feel free to email them to me. I'll play over them. I'll load them on Instagram. I'll jam with them. Load them up to Instagram. See me jamming. I think that'll be a lot of fun. It's a new idea that I came up with right when I was filming the introduction, but I think it'll be fun. 
Think about becoming a Patreon. <clears throat> Cheaper than a cheap cheeseburger. And until next time, keep on rocking and rolling. Have a lovely day. Life is good, my friends. 10thumbspro.com. Boom. Take care of yourself, and we'll see you soon.